Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Fun Ahead TV. Thank you so much for watching. Behind me is my beautiful 2001 Porsche Carrera 4 that we are currently working on several spring projects on. The big one that we're going to continue working on today is involving the transmission. We are taking out several of the gear sets to eventually be able to get to the second gear synchro and second gear itself to be able to remedy the symptom of grinding while going into gear and the occasional second gear pop out right after going into second gear. This is a very common issue with these transmissions as they start to age, specifically with second gear. Uh, so we are just going to go ahead and continue fixing that today and we'll pick up where we left off in the last video where we took off the nose cone and got access to everything within the transmission and now we start tearing it down. All right, well, let's continue on. Let me just walk you guys through what we need to do next. Actually, with that, let me start by talking through our end goal. So this set here is the primary one that we're gonna be dealing with. Let me turn this back. This gear is the reverse gear. This is first gear. This is second gear. We need to deal with the second gear synchro. So we need to get as far down on this shaft as that gear. So what has to happen is there's a sir clip up here. This sir clip right here. We have to pull that. Once we have pulled that, then the rest of this gear, these gears are loose and we can pull the reverse and first as an assembly. We can pull the second gear as an assembly. Before we pull these gear sets, as you can see, we've got the forks that are in the way. So we have to move the forks. There are these small dowel pins on each of them that we need to push out. We can punch these dowel pins out uh, which will allow you know this fork to move on this shaft. From there, we can pull the uh, shaft up and out, which then obviously gives us uh, the freedom to be able to get a gear puller up around this entire set. That's kind of the next big step before removing the circlip and trying to get a gear puller on these. We of course need to get these two forks up and out of the way. Yeah, it looks like that punch should be, this is a quarter inch punch. I'm pretty sure this will work just fine for all of these. I might first start by going a little smaller. Yeah, I might use a, what size is this? 3 16 I might start by using a 3 16 punch. I don't want to get the other one interference fit within this uh, fork. That, that would kind of suck. Now that you guys are familiar with the game plan, I think I'm going to just throw you guys on a time lapse real quick while I hopefully just pretty easily knock these out. Alrighty, everybody. So let me just talk you through what happened and then, you know, I'll discuss my mistakes real quick so that you guys hopefully don't replicate them in the event that you ever do this job. So let's first talk about the reverse first fork. So I screwed up in that when I first started pushing the dowel pin out of the fork, I did not have this reverse gear engaged. So what that ha what happened was when I punch punched the, the dowel out, it interfered with this gear. Uh, there's not enough room behind the gear for it to come out far enough. What needs to happen is you need to have this gear up in reverse like that. Then, of course, that opens up this clearance and allows for enough room for the dowel pin to get removed. But at first, I started bunching that thing out thinking I had enough room. It interfered here, and then I couldn't you know, remove the fork off the shaft, which meant that I couldn't take it out. Uh, down here. So that was that was kind of a scary moment. I was like, oh shoot, what did I just do? Now I can't, how do I get the dowel out? Well, you have to do that. And then you have to do the same thing on this gear as well. Engage, um, I guess it would be first gear uh, with this fork. The next mistake that I made was, you know, on the first fork, um, I did not realize that these are retainers for the the, the dowels. There's, um, so when I pulled out the first, you know, the reverse and first dowel, 
I heard a click down here and I was like, oh shoot, like what did I just do? And I didn't realize that there's, uh, you know, this little, there's basically a spring and a ball that pushes up against the rod. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's, here's the bottom of each rod. And so you have, you know, this spring, which pushes this little ball bearing into one of these because it obviously has three possible discrete positions that it can be into. So that's what gives you your, you know, your pressure. Once you slot it, slot it into gear, that's exactly what does it is these. I am an idiot. I thought these were just sitting down in there. So when I went to pull it up, uh, it shot the ball out into the hole. Turns out it wasn't a very big issue because you know, the ball is just sitting down there. No big deal. The second gear one, however, is a bigger deal. You need to make sure you get that one out because there is, it looks like, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it looks like probably hard to see. But when you look down in there, I think that goes into the, the lower case here. So if I were to have done the same thing on this one, as I did with this one, so you can see here, this is just has a bottom. It's holding oil right now. So I just had to stick a magnet down in there and get the ball. For this one, that ball, if I were to do the same thing with this, it probably would have shot the ball down into there and I would have been not a happy camper. Anyway, crisis averted there. And then, you know, I made my mistakes on the first one. When I went to take out the second one, it was no big deal. But anyway, that's a very long winded way of saying it all went well, it happened. And now what we need to do, of course, is remove these gear sets. That's the big next step. Okay. It's officially time to pull gears and I'm officially nervous. I think it's just, it's a multifold thing or a multifaceted thing. You know, I've never done this before, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, each of these synchro sleeves, this one and then the second gear one here, both have three ball bearings and uh, kind of these like tiny little pucks that they fit into and they're spring, you know, they're, <laughs> they're under spring force. So supposedly it's not hard to as you're pulling these off, uh, release those springs and therefore shooting the little pucks and ball bearings all over your shop. So that could be a bad news thing. I, I just, there's just a lot of unknowns as far as like, once I get it apart, assuming I do, can I then get it back together? But you know, the show must go on in order to do this. We've got to do this. It's officially time now to put our gear puller on this and get to pulling. So of course we're going to start with the first gear set, which com is comprised of this entire section here. So that's, you know, this pressed in roller bearing, these, uh, the synchros for reverse, reverse gear itself, and then first gear. We're going to pull on first gear itself and hopefully get that up. And then if that all goes to plan, then we'll move on to second gear. But anyway, of course, we're not trying to pull every single gear from both shafts. We're only trying to pull the first and second sets of gears. So given that that's the case, I'm not going to take these forks off for now. And if I end up needing to for one reason or another, then we will. It's not that big of a deal as we saw earlier. So I'm going to get my heat gun. I'm going to get my gear puller. I'm going to get my impact. And I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse and we'll just start shooting, see what happens. Wish me luck. Well, as you just saw, we got the first gear set off, the reverse and first gear. That was, Easier than I thought, but still very stressful. You really have to put those gears under a lot of tension in order to get those off. So this here, this very top part is where the, the big needle bearing sits. Now that's a press fit on. This here is the uh, synchros for reverse gear. That's press fit on. This here is where um, reverse gear sits and then uh, this right here is where first gear sits. Now, of course, because we have, you know, like two items that are press fit one after another, 
of course, you get uh, some pretty heavy tension um, along the way. Of course, on the note of the gear sets, um, we'll take a closer look at this later, but so this is the needle bearing that sets below um, the first gear right here. Uh, this is the reverse gear. And then we've got the synchro sleeve, which is going to have those detent springs and pucks in there, like I'd mentioned. But fortunately, right now, it's all being weighted down uh, by the synchros themselves. Um, and then here's the big needle bearing. So, uh, so like I said, this bearing and this were both pressed on. So we had to overcome the tension of both of those in order to get all of this off. Now, I'm just being very delicate with this for now. We will look at these in closer detail later, but for now, I'm not concerned about them. Of course, we just got these out of the way so that we could get to uh, second gear itself. One thing to note um, when you're using a heat gun, which of course you have to do, you have to be very careful to not overheat it because of this bearing right here. It is very delicate and it of course is uh, in a plastic housing so you could damage that if you were to uh, overheat the, uh, the gears themselves. So I, I concentrated most of the heat onto the, uh, the press, pressed in areas. Now as far as what we're going to do next, here is that second gear set, second gear here. Uh, and then here's the synchro sleeve. Now here are the uh, detent um, springs and pucks that I was talking about. Here, I'll give you a quick top view of that. So you can see there's three of them. Um, now what these do, and we'll get a closer look at this later, there's little notches on the inside of these teeth here. So as the sleeve, the sleeve of course moves up and down, whether it's locking in first gear or whether it's locking in second gear, and so these detent springs help to basically hold its neutral position because there's little little slots for the ball bearings that sit like right in the middle. So when this is in the middle, the, uh, the springs uh, push into those little slots and you know act as, as a detent to help it maintain its position when it's in the middle. Anyway, from here, um, yeah, we're gonna have to do basically the same process over again. I'm hoping that it goes just as smoothly. Um, this is right here, the synchro ring for first gear. Now it, it of course sets directly on top of this. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, put that in place um, and try to hold it in somehow so that uh, I don't have um, any issues with these ball bearings and springs and pucks going flying because quite honestly, I'm very nervous about that. I guess the only saving grace of that situation is I'm considering ordering an entire um, one of these uh, because I'm worried that the the teeth which are the equal and opposite of the gear teeth on the second gear are bad on this um, You know, it, it only makes sense if if the second gears teeth are bad and rounded off uh, Well the teeth that did that to second gear are most likely rounded off as well The bad side about all this is everything in these transmissions is very expensive this second gear which I just ordered uh, was on sale at $754, just the gear. And this assembly here uh, is a cool $1,000. So, you know, replacing both of these together uh, is obviously a very costly thing. And that doesn't even include the synchros that go in between them, um, which I'm also going to have to replace. So that's, you know, add in a few hundred dollars worth of synchro hardware. And then, you know, you've got a $2,500 you know, $22 to $2,500 project on your hands just within this stack right here. I'm gonna go ahead and shut up and try to do this. I do need to make a little bit of a modification to my gear puller. Um, as you can see, you probably noticed in the other, in the time lapse, <laughs> I added extra arms here um, to make it long enough because being that this is a Carrera 4, it has this extra length of the top here that the uh, Carrera 2 does not have. So. In order to now reach the second gear, I need to make this even longer. Anyway, again, I'm gonna shut up. Let's go do the thing. All right, quick update uh, before we take off this second gear. So as you can see, this looks a little bit different than what you guys just saw a second ago. Um, and the reason is uh, because of me and I couldn't leave well enough alone, I decided to move this uh, sleeve around with the hopes that I could get those detent springs out before trying to pull um, this gear and fortunately I was successful at doing that it did you know require that I have to basically pop those out of place there's no good way to do that without making them kind of just explode out of place basically the spring goes in there 
uh, and then that little puck sits here and then those ball bearings like i said they go into these little notches on the inside of this ring uh, and again like i said those the purpose of them is to hold this ring in its in the center of this whenever it's not engaged in um, either one of these gears so that was very stressful but at least they're out they didn't go flying which is fantastic so now i can pull this gear stress-free before we do that I, this is a kind of a decent learning opportunity uh, i can show you guys you know just how this works um, you can see here there's several different uh, sets of teeth the inner hub of this assembly this hub here is splined to the output shaft okay so what happens when you go into gear let's say let's say we go into second gear this uh, the the shifter fork slides and pushes this down to then connect all of these teeth here and so by connecting all those teeth boom we're in gear now we have this gear effectively locked to this shaft because it is then you know by these by this connector uh, held into this which that's actually splined into the gear and then when you pop it out of second gear second gear is no longer physically connected to the shaft and it can just spin at a different speed basically is what happens with it it just you know that's what happens to any one of these gears they just spin at a different speed whenever they're not physically boom locked into gear um, and of course the synchros are are between these two so um, as you're going into gear uh, the synchros help mesh uh, the, the gear teeth um, so that you know they can then be one to one. Oh, and and one last thing. So as I mentioned, so these teeth here are the ones uh, the ones on physically on the gear are the ones that you know are causing our issue of of kind of not wanting to go into gear. You can see they're rounded off. They shouldn't be that way. So basically the failure mechanism here is the synchro got worn. That allowed for this sleeve to push further than it should be able to before the gears were truly meshed up one to one speed, which of course then caused a collision with all the teeth. So that's bad, of course. You know, the synchro got worn down. And then of course you could have the grinding of gears. So the grinding of gears is when these teeth on this ring hit those teeth on that gear and you can see it's kind of hard to tell but when you do when you look at this ring the teeth on the bottom side are kind of rounded off um, let me try to find a good spot here for example those should be very sharp and you can see that there's several kind of where near where my thumb is um, that are pretty rounded off and they're not as pretty and beautiful as they should be. Whereas when you look at this upper side, you can see how sharp those are. Guess what? We just got it done. We just got the second gear pulled. Look, we've got both gear sets sitting right here on the table. All we need to do now is get the new parts in and start putting it together, but we are literally at the halfway point. Granted, I think <laughs> probably putting it together is going to be uh, quite the task, just based on how difficult it was and how much force it took to pull those gears off of that shaft. However, doable nonetheless. We're gonna figure out some way to get it all done. We've gotten this far. Anyway, with that, I think we are done for the day. We had a lot of excitement. We got the gear sets pulled. Now, like I said, we are literally at the halfway point of this project. What I need now is to wait on parts. Once we get the parts, we can go back together with them, which will be very exciting and then we can get this whole thing bundled up and our springtime Porsche projects will be that much closer to being done. But it's not all stopping there. Like I said in the very first video, while we're waiting on parts for the transmission, we can go ahead and do the radiators, which are sitting in that box right there. So upcoming video very soon on actually swapping out the radiators while we are waiting on parts. 
for the transmission. If you found this video helpful, please do me a huge favor and like the video. It really helps out the channel a lot. And at the very least, if you found it slightly entertaining, please hit the like button. Please subscribe too, because like I said, much more content to come on the Porsche, on the Land Cruiser, maybe even the Lincoln or the Tractor someday. But we're halfway through this project. We gotta bundle this thing up. More videos to come. So please hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. With that, thank you so much for tuning in to Fun Ahead TV as always, and I will talk to you guys next time.